Namaste and a very warm welcome to the Vedic Astrology Masterclass Series. I'm Ms. Srishti and I will be your host for this session today. Today's Masterclass will be given by Ms. Sarbani Rath, who will be teaching us about hot perfumery, the Jyotisha of luxury fragrance. Sarbani ji is a Jaimini scholar, Jyotisha Pandita, JSP and PJC mentor, President Sri Jagannath Center. She started learning Vedic astrology since 2001 from Pandit Sanjay Rathji and now teaches extensively in the Parashara Jyotisha group and in the Jaimini Scholar Program. She re regularly lectures at international astrological conferences and consults globally. She is a faculty member of the Department of Contemplative and Behavioral Sciences, Sri Sri University in Katak, Orissa where she teaches Jyotisha in undergraduate and postgraduate courses. In fact, she was one of the key advisory members in helping build the syllabus of the department. She is involved in the editing and production of the Jyotisha Digest quarterly magazine. She has done her post-graduation from Presidency College, University of Calcutta. Today, Sarbani ji will be sharing her research, findings and observations on the topic titled Hot Perfumery, the Jyotisha of Luxury Fragrance. A very warm welcome to you, Sarbani ji. Before we begin the masterclass, uh, I'm sorry, I would request the audience to know that any questions that you might have uh, can be typed and posted in the comment section. At the end of the session, ma'am will answer them one by one. Over to you, Sarbani ji. Thank you so much, uh, Srishti. And I would like to begin by uh, paying my respects and pranam to Dr. B.B. Raman. And it is such an honor uh, for me to be uh, presenting in this August forum. Uh, my pranams to uh, Niranjan Babuji and my namaskar to Raman Suprajarama. So uh, I would like to begin uh, with the name of the Guru. And then I would like to follow uh, by a small prayer uh, to Goddess Lakshmi, the bestower of all luxuries and Aishwarya and opulence. So with her blessings, uh, we shall go forward in today's class. Om Gurave Namah Om Gurave Namah Om Gurave Namah Om Shrim Rim Shrim Kamale Kamalalai Prasida Prasida Shrim Rim Shrim Mahalakshmai Nama Om Shrim Rim Shrim Kamale Kamalalai Prasida Prasida Shrim Rim Shrim Mahalakshmai Nama Om Shrim Rim Shrim Kamale Kamalalai, Prasida Prasida, Shrim Rim Shrim, Mahalakshmai Nama. So today's topic is Oat Perfumery or the Jyotisha of Luxury Fragrances. So this is a work in progress and it is the first time that I will be presenting on this topic. So uh, please consider it as like kind of an introduction uh, to the whole subject. So the picture, the painting that you see on uh, my title slide, it is a painting of uh, Begum Nujahan, formerly known as Meherun Nisa, and was the chief empress or wife of Emperor Shah Jahan. So uh, she was a great patron of fragrances, and uh, it was under her name uh, that the famous Elixir of Rose 
which is now so popular all over the world, was first discovered. Uh, of course, the uh, researcher, uh, Ruby Lal, who has now, I think, published a, a biography of hers, has said that it is not really Nur Jahan who did that, but it was Nur Jahan's mother, Asmat Begum, who accidentally discovered uh, the whole uh, joy, the whole uh, essence of Rugala. But we shall talk about it a little bit later. Very, very briefly, I'm going to give you an overview or a nutshell uh, on the history. So we have this Harappan edict which says that the use of fragrance is fit only for royalty. And the use of fragrance uh, as a luxury product was actually discovered first during the Indus Valley civilization and during the Harappan civilization as well. And there have been discoveries of perfumeries, of perfume making utensils uh, in which these uh, perfumes were, uh, uh, you know, concocted. Later on, uh, the Puranas actually talk a lot about it. And the Agni Puran speaks about uh, baths which were made out of 150 fragrant flowers, where for just for the pleasure of the kings. But Sayana, the author of Kama Sutra, has said that, that people should know the 64 kinds of methods of preparing perfume. And the methods of preparing perfume were known as Gandha Yukti. And then, of course, we have the great astrologer Varaha Mihira, who says, and I've quoted him on this, the pleasures of royalty may be enjoyed by a king by means of various kinds of perfume. So in the ancient tradition, we are seeing that the notion of using fragrances or perfume was associated with royalty. From there, I can proceed a little bit further and we can see that the Egyptians have also indulged in a similar manner. The Mesopotamians have also indulged in a similar manner. I'm not, of course, going to go into this huge detail, but just kind of giving you all a little uh, uh, sort of a nutshell, just pointers to see from where we are starting today's discussion. So following the Indus Valley, following our tradition here, we have the Egyptians, we have the Mesopotamians who all indulged in this. Now, we also have these concepts of preparing, uh, you know, these uh, perfumed fumes and perfumed oils and lapers and paste, which are also given in the Ayurvedic texts, such as Charaka Samhita and the Sushruta Samhita. Okay, now, uh, but those are more of a healing kind. There is also a Gandha Shastra in our scriptures, but we are making a distinction between those which are more attuned to aromatherapy, those which are attuned to well-being, those which are geared more for health. So we are segregating that. We are also segregating those which were offered to the gods. The divine were also offered Gandha, as it was called in the Vedic language in Sanskrit. The gods were also offered Gandha. That also I'm leaving aside. We are talking about fragrances which were prepared as elaborately, as opulently for the kings. And the kings used them for one major purpose was to use them as an aphrodisiacs. So they were used by the kings. They were used by the queens. They were used to make the entire palaces uh, very comfortable, very luxurious with a, a semblance of opulence in it. So there is a very, very distinct category when we are saying fragrance, that's the way it was used. Very opulent, very luxurious. And we're segregating this from the more healing aspect, from the aromatherapy. People nowadays who are working on well-being and working on uh, the Ayurveda, they have uh, unearthed many of these concoctions which are used for the well-being of the person. Uh, well, you can say that a lot of the fumigatory perfumes also had some benefits of the health because if it was used to calm the mind, uh, then it was also a beneficial product. Now, Varahamihira has extensively 
worked on these on the whole notion of gandha yukti various methods of preparing the perfumes and surprisingly there is not much jyotish in it and i wonder why he actually collated together maybe he had an idea or an agenda to introduce jyotish in it and uh, he has drawn them from the various vedic texts i'll give you an example of one of them one of them is called the ocean of sense or the gandhar nava where 16 plants not really herbs but mainly flowers and some herbs were put together in different proportions you can see this colorful box that i've made this is the proportion he has given like to two portions of agar agaru there should be five portions of priyangu there should be four portions of sprika there should be seven portions of malaya three portions of patra eight portions of musta one portion of twak six portion of nakha five portions of turashka two portions of rasa seven portions of tagara and so on so forth shrika sekheya kesha manasi kunduruka so this is one uh, you know process that he's talking about and he says you put the receptacles or the utensils in this kind of a box and in this kind of proportion and he says you powder them and make them into a paste and after you make them into a paste you must smoke them in three layers so in the beginning you must smoke them with sri vatsa which is called musk and then you smoke them with something called a sarjaka i managed to get some photographs here for you and i put them out together this actually took me a long time and then you smoke them with jaggery and then this that you get can be used for the hair can be used for the bar and they said any rights and i put it barahmi over here that rub it over the head and the baby the person who's bathing such a bath is suited to kings so you see all the time all the while and there are many more such quotations that these are for the kings these are for the royalty even in the egyptians you can see this is the way it was done now then he goes on to a very interesting thing he says that this is kind of a, like a sarvato bhadra and this sarvato bhadra meaning this is you know you can use it for all kind of purposes and then he says you can do different permutation combination so you can do three portions of agaru and two portions of patra and eight portions of saikeya and with this you can get almost this amount 174720 varieties of permutation combination of perfume that you can get out of it and this is just one which he has called gandhar nava like this there are many uh, sort of configuration for example one such configuration uh, is a combination of nine flowers where again you make a box with nine i wonder whether was he talking about the navagras and then the the nine uh, flowers are again used in permutation combination and they use this is absolutely phenomenal and you can see that the amount of layers and levels of uh, fumigation that was done it was smoked and then it was used so this is a ongoing work for me and i am this whole theory part which i'm really cutting it short now but i propose to uh, you know work on this further and present it within uh, the next year or so where i would actually work much more in detail on vaharan hiras uh, gandha yukti procedures that he has written out here now from then we actually come to the mughals so when the mughals come to india they were really bothered with the humidity of the climate and that's why they always they really took they absolutely indulged into the uh, whole concept of uh, fragrances and they delved into it so those of you who visited agra fort you would know that they would tell you there is a huge olympic sized pool in marble outside and i thought oh maybe they bathed in it no they filled it with milk and sprayed it with all kinds of fragrant petal leaves and while the king and queen would sit inside uh, the um, uh, you know in the sitting area and the breeze would come and they would waft a beautiful fragrance from that now this is absolutely the height of luxury that we can't even imagine today so that just the breeze comes and the breeze that will bring that wafting would be that beautiful smell from the fragrant flowers and at this time you know so akbar actually uh, uh, you know had uh, 
a whole department of perfumes. This is Akbar out here. He had a whole department of perfumes, which he called Kushbu Khana. And this is written in detail by uh, in any Akbari. It is written by Al-Kindi. Al-Kindi wrote in great detail about Akbar's Kushbu Khana. Then his son, um, Jahangir, and as I started my talk by telling you how Jahangir's mother-in-law, Nuk Jahan's mother, Asmat Begum, was by chance discovered the Rugula, and the Rugula was, you know, they were boiling the rose petals in hot water. They would initially use extracts of oil. And so the scum of the rose petals fell, you know, in a corner. And as the scum of the rose petals collected in one corner, she discovered that it was the most highest concentrate of perfume that is, was uh, possibly seen ever. And hence they started using it and they started calling it Rue Gulab. Now the current trend is that rose has become a leading uh, fragrance, a leading note, and you have perfumes and eau de colognes and eau de toilettes, everything which is rose-based. But somebody from the Middle East had gifted Nur Jahan with the uh, Damask uh, rose. And this Damask rose was then used by Nur Jahan's mother accidentally, and this was discovered. So you can see this is a picture of another picture of Nur Jahan. You can see an Atar bottle. So the Middle East really, really developed this. The Middle East still has developed it. And they continue, and their tradition of perfumes are very different. I will show you a kind of bottle right in the end. What is the current notion, what they call Amarati perfume fragrances. We, don't, we are not even aware of such a thing called Amarati fragrances. And they, of course, use a lot of wood, a lot of saffron, a lot of musk, and not so much florals like what we do. And you can see the Atar bottle. Atar in what in Urdu now they call Itar. So I just want to say one thing. This Ru Gulab is still available in Old Delhi in Chagni Chow. And it is sold, a 9 millimeter bottle is sold for almost $500, that is 36,000 rupees. So you can see what we are talking about here. This is not at all about well-being out here. This is about sheer luxury of opulence. Now, this is what I was trying to show you, that the current Emirati perfume is this. Uh, and the creator, they've called it the Sheikh Perfume. This is one company that I've showed you. This company is called Hind Al Oud. And the creator, this is the creator's work. The first creation is inspired by royalty. All right. Over time, the distinctly sweet, powerful scent of amber tells the story of an enduring end and deep beginning. And the kind of notes they use are very different. They, of course, use depend very, very heavily on the wood. This is just to show you, like this, there are many companies where you have quite a few opulent perfumes in the Middle East. But it is a very niched market because the Arab world still uses these. In India, following the Vedic tradition, unfortunately, we do not have any indigenous method of perfumes anymore. So these atars which were created at those times, those atars are still continuing. And they are available in these small uh, indigenous factories. And apart from, say, Jodi Mal, who kind of produces Ru Gulab in that way, and I'd show you, I mean, with very, very dismal kind of packaging, the indigenous methods that you are seeing have gone. What has revived is because of Ayurveda and because of the whole concept of well-being and health. So the health processes, the Ayurvedic processes, the kind of lepers for the body and treatments for the body, which is more rooted in well-being, that has come up. But this royal, luxurious fragrances, that has died down for us in India. When we talk about indigenous fragrance, we are still using these atars made of jasmine and chameli and the bale and the mogra, and which is really kind of a remnant stayed from the uh, Mughal era. So that was a very, very, okay. Before I start on this, I want to give one more last word. In Europe, there was no notion of luxury fragrance. In Europe, luxury fragrance appeared only in the 14th century. And it was discovered by uh, Princess Elizabeth or Queen Elizabeth of Hungary, who the first time uh, you know, commission the production of a perfumed fragranced water. And that's how uh, it came into the West. 14th century is very late. 
surprisingly, France actually picked it up because the Emperor Napoleon was very, very involved in perfume. Uh, I was thinking of sharing Napoleon's horoscope, but I did not do that because I thought that I would not have enough time to make my presentation. So, but Emperor Perfume, Emperor Napoleon was a great consumer of fragrances. Basically in France, they were very conscious about their body odor and they felt they need that it was a very good method to camouflage their body odor. And that is why France really got into the act and started into the development of uh, fragrances where the Western world and Europe was concerned. And as most of you may know, today France is the leading, um, I mean, for a long time, last maybe 100 years, is the leading uh, fragrance industry uh, of Europe. All the perfumes that we use now are inspired by French perfumiers. All the uh, perfumes that we use are, give, are actually companies which are French companies. Uh, or other companies, but which have perfumers coming from France. And uh, so they, are, they have captured the market in the last 100 years. And so the, all the horoscopes that I will be sharing with you are actually of French perfume makers. Because unfortunately, Akbar has three to four horoscopes and we don't have reliable birth times for Jahangir uh, or for Shah Jahan. And it would need a lot of working to actually work on those horoscopes. So I cannot use that. I would have loved to have used the horoscope of Nur Jahan uh, and of Akbar as well as of Shah Jahan. But, uh, and we do not have horoscopes of people also who belong to the eras of the perfumes. Okay, that was a very hurried introduction. And as I said, more of the introduction, more on that very soon in uh, this year. So now when I look at the horoscope and I say that how am I going to identify that somebody either enjoys or has a nose for or can create or has a uh, sense of this kind of luxurious fragrance? How do I know it? What are my parameters that I'm looking at? One of the first things that I'm looking at is Mercury, who's the governor of Prithvi Tattva, he rules Gandha or smell. And when we use the word Gandha, though in Sanskrit Gandha encompasses both bad and good and all kinds of smell, but actually Gandha means fragrance as well. So when we offer sandalwood to the Lord, we say Gandha. So Gandha is the correct word, although Sugandhi is used, but Gandha is also the more correct word to use for that. So Mercury governs that. So this set me thinking that does this mean that mercury is actually um, representing perfumes now we have to look into the concept of somebody who enjoys luxuries and opulences and for this we are i'm actually taking resort to germany maharishi and germany maharishi has told us Purnendu shukrayo bhove. that means when the full moon and Shuk venus are in Swamsha, one will enjoy or receive and get all the luxuries of life. The full moon, Purna Indu Shukrayo Bhoge, all right, in Swamsha. Now, what do you mean by Swamsha? That means in any of the Amshas. It does not mean only Navamsha, it can mean any of the Varga charts, any Amsha. Swamsha can mean the Varga Lagna, it can mean the Lagnamsha, it can mean the Chandramsha. It can mean the Karakamsha. So this actually is a very deep study by which we need to look. Where do we see full moon and Venus over there? When we say full moon and Venus, are we talking about a Yuti? So a Yuti is a very perfect kind of a combination for this. Shukra, okay, I will speak a little bit more on this. Another uh, uh, hint that we get from the Rishi is that when the moon is in Swamsha and it is aspected by Shukra, then it gives the native the skills for handling liquids and chemicals and it makes one a Rasabadi. Skills of handling liquids and chemicals. You know, one of the French perfumers has said that our perfume making really boils down to chemistry. So many of the famous perfumers or perfume makers will actually have a chemistry degree or were chemists, not all of them, some of them are. Because it gives you a very deep understanding of chemicals, very deep understanding, because even with fragrances of flowers, you're breaking them down to the rudimentary chemicals. So moon in Swamsha, 
expected by Venus will give you that scale. Now, why is this talk about full moon and Venus? Venus, as we know, gives you that whole sense of luxury and, and the enjoyment of bhoga is given both by Shukra and by Chandra. Chandra, as you know, has taken birth in Rohini Nakshatra, which is his favorite nakshatra. Uh, Chandra is exalted and Swashetra Mula Trikuna in Vrishabh Rashi. Taurus or Vrishabh Rashi of the Kalpurusha is the most luxurious Lagna, the most luxurious Rashi, the luxury lovers. All right. The full moon over there is absolutely blooming. Rohini loves all the luxuries. That is why, uh, you know, we always say that those who are born in Rohini Nakshatra have a tendency to have a little club mentality. They like to belong to the exclusive clubs. They like to enjoy the exclusive things of life. They like to enjoy the uh, absolute uh, luxurious products of life. So one is using expensive products. Another is using luxurious products. So today I'm going to go beyond and touch upon that who talked about the luxury products. All right. That is where full moon and Venus is coming in over there. Chandra is exalted in Shukra's sign. Shukra is the representative of Mahalakshmi and is the bestower of all Aishwarya. When we say luxury, when we say oath perfumery or we say oath couture, it is Aishwarya. You know, very, very high octave and high level. I want to point out another very interesting point out here. When I said that, that perfumery actually uh, came in Europe only in the 14th century, uh, the whole word, the oath perfumery, which I have used here in my title, that word also is a very new coinage. So they had perfumes and they had fragrances and they had luxury perfumes, but it didn't have the concept of oath perfumery. Oath perfumery is what I talked to you about, having a bath with 150 fragrances, uh, having, uh, you know, 16 flowers and then fuming them. All the processes we talked about, uh, those absolutely uh, very, very uh, opulent kind of, uh, you know, methods of procuring and concepts of fragrance. That is what we mean by oath perfumery. And that concept of oath perfumery came into Europe very recently. And it was coined by a British perfumer called Roja. And Roja Dab is the one who actually coined this. So now you do have many of the top uh, brands are using, the top perfume making brands are using this term oath perfumery. But oath, the term oath perfumery would be at least only just 30 years old. So it's something very new. It's a very new concept uh, in, the, uh, in the Western mind. Now, so apart from looking at Moon, Venus, and of course, uh, Mercury, these are the three planets which we are going to look at. And remember, no dark moon, but a full moon, but a well-placed moon, okay? Amongst the Vargas, of course, I would look at Dashamsha because Dashamsha is a profession. So if somebody is a perfume maker, I would need to look at Dashamsha to ensure whether, uh, you know, that is uh, showing in the chart. But what I would really like to draw attention and I want to focus on is the Shurashamsha chart. Parashara has called it Kalamsha, referring to the 16 Kalas of the moon. And this is the key uh, Varga to confirm whether we enjoy or receive or get any kind of luxuries in our life. So a few brief words on what is Kalamsha or Shurashamsha. So Parashara has several Varga schemes and one of the Varga schemes is the Dasha Varga scheme. And in the Dasha Varga scheme, to the rudimental Vargas, he has added Shashti Amsha, Dashamsha and Kalamsha. So Kalamsha is a very, very important Varga. It forms as the second strata. The second strata is the conscious level. And this conscious level of Vargas, they help us depict the existential conditions of man. So we have, uh, the foremost we have in this is Shodashamsha, we have Vimshamsha, we have Chatur Vimshamsha, all right? These are the Vargas uh, and others which fall into the second strata of the conscious level. These are all second harmonics. So the first division we will have 
is chaturthamsha all right when the fourth bhava when a bhava is divided into four parts the root following the root bhava being the fourth bhava of the rashi chart so we have chaturthamsha and from the chaturthamsha the second harm the first harmonic of chaturthamsha is the shorashamsha chart all right so from the first that we have the division is actually chaturthamsha where a bhava is divided into four parts and the first harmonic of chaturthamsha is shorashamsha all right this is the 116 the division of a bhava and so what is the consciousness that it is showing what is it it is the consciousness of the mind please note what i'm saying that this is all stems from the fourth house right fourth house is sukha bhava fourth house is the house where shukra and chandra get digbala fourth house is a house where chandra is the karaka fourth house in the natural kal purusha is lorded by the moon so the fourth house is entirely to do with our mind and when we are coming to the uh, conscious level we are really talking about a very deep state of mind in the kalamsha kala amsha kalamsha is the 16 kalas of the moon what are the different states of mind out here very deeply at one level it shows sukha dukha as parashiva tells us that is happiness and sadness and at second level it shows us vahanas our cars luxury cars will have a fantastic chariot will i have a mercedes will i have a bentley or will i have a small mini and it shows luxuries and comforts these are the three things that we see happiness and sadness vehicles and luxuries luxuries and comforts those luxuries or those vehicles that will give pleasure to my mind that will make my mind very happy this concept of happiness and sadness sukha dukha we are not going to deal over here that is a very very deep concept of what our mind finds happiness and sadness in but because it is ruled by the moon and we are talking about sukha in this varga not only are we going to look at moon but the kendra bhava becomes very important grahas and kendra bhava are of primary importance to us any graha over there will have a very deep impact on what is causing sukha or happiness for us because this is moon dominated i will again and again focus on chandra over here all right so luxuries which will give me happiness do i like that kind of eau de perfume that kind of uh, luxury perfume i like it because that gives me happiness so either i'm a consumer or i'm a maker of perfume because i need to really enjoy that task to be producing these perfumes isn't it so luxuries and comforts that which give joy to the mind that which gives happiness to the mind that which gives comfort to the mind all right the vehicles which i enjoy comforts that i enjoy this is what kalam sha about the purna kala of chandra so we are going to see luxuries over there what is my mind receiving it hence it's a very very important division now one more very important thing that i would like to point out once parashara gives all the definitions what each varga what are the things we can see from each of the vargas what do we see from hora what do we see from rashi uh, from uh, vishkana what do we see from navamsha what do we see from dashamsha right up to d60 he tells us what we see from all that after that you know he gives us a tip he gives two points the first point is he says that if a graha is in a krura shashti amsha then the results that we will get from that graha are not good at all which means that largely maybe the bhava loaded by that graha everything signified by that graha especially the bhavas loaded by that graha in our rashi chart it is not good that's why we always see where is the ninth lord what shashti amsha the ninth lord is in because the ninth lord is our for destiny graha right it is our bhagyesha hence we would like to see where it is it is our dharmesha it is how what our morals and dharma our values and principles are so we would like to see over there that what shashti amsha it is in i hope it is not in krura shashti amsha many of us follow this but after that he adds one more point and he says 
that if a planet is in a Shubha Kalamsha, then that will give fantastic results, very beautiful results of prosperity, of happiness, of wealth, all that is auspicious will be given. These are two things. He points out Shashti Amsha and he points out Kalamsha or Shorash Amsha. How important is Shorash Amsha for the mind? All right. So, but we overlook that. We, uh, some of us are looking at Shashti Amsha, but definitely we are overlooking at the Shorash Amsha point. Okay. Now, This is the horoscope. As I told you, that because of reliable horoscopes, I have taken them all from, in the last 100 years, all famous perfume makers and perfume owners, who are largely all French, okay, who I have over here. And uh, that's what we are, because this is now in the forefront. This is in the center stage. Now, this gentleman called Jean Patou, he was not a perfume maker, but he was associated with launching one of the most famous perfumes. He launched it in 1930 and that perfume was called Joy. He launched it when the Great Depression was going on in America. He made his, uh, uh, his earnings, his fortunes through fragrances. Although initially he started his business uh, as a, you know, as a fashion company, as doing clothes, etc. But that didn't work out for him. And he went to war. And when he came back from the war, he relaunched himself and survived through fragrances. And this was the perfume. And it's very interesting. Within six months of this perfume, launching of this perfume, he died. This was, again, of course, based on Jasmine. It has been declared recently that the perfume of the last century happens to be joy. People thought that it would be the famous number five of the Chanel company, but it was not that. It was actually joy, which was uh, declared to be the perfume of the century. Now, here we are looking at the horoscope of Jean Patou. Again, note he is not a perfumier. He is not a perfume maker, but since he got all his earnings from that and he was very deeply involved with a fragrance, which was absolutely considered the best of a century, there must be something to it. I have to confess that when I was in my early 20s and late teens, I've also used that perfume. It was supposed to be one of the most expensive perfume at the time. Now, very briefly, you can see his Atma Karaka Manga, but his Amatya Karaka is Bhakti. Amatya Karaka Graha, we see in the Rashi chart, and to denote what kind of profession you may be doing. And if there are Grahas associated or a Yuti with Amatya Karaka, that also signifies. Now, his Amatya Karaka is Mercury, which itself we told you Mercury is very important as a Graha because uh, for fragrances is concerned because it's ruling the Gandha Tattva. So here Mercury is in the fifth house in Lagna Trikona. It is Ucha and it is conjoined Shukra. Shukra happens to be the Lagnish. It is Taurus Lagna. So he had a naturally very, very inherent sense of luxury and uh, uh, style and fashion about him. He loved all these things. So the Lagnish Shukra has gone. Now another thing that we should notice over here that Shukra is in a Prithvi Rashi. It is in Mercury's sign. We need to keep a watch out if Venus or Moon is in Mercury sign for this current purpose. So Venus is the Lagna Lord, Taurus is the Lagna. It is in Mercury sign in Prithvi Rashi, conjoint and exalted Mercury, who is the Amatta Karaka. I can straight away, without looking at anything, we can say straight away, oh, oh he will be working on things related to Mercury and Venus. If I am good in my looking at horoscopes, I can say that oh, Mercury is exalted, so it will have a say in that. So that straight away is Gandha. And I should be able to say the Gandha above clothes and bags and fashion and everything else. I have not done Navamsha corrections for all the horoscopes, but you can take a look here. Mercury and Moon are Yuti in, uh, uh, in trines. It's, both, it's in Swamsha. It is both Karakamsha. All right, as well as in the Navamsha Lagna Kona and Shukra is in a Kindra. But here we come to the Kalamsha chart. In the Kalamsha chart, you can see Shuk Chandra is in Kindra. 
It is not only in Kendra, it is Dik Bala, it is exalted in Taurus Rashi. Okay, so uh, a very, very powerful moon over there. That means indulging and you can see that Shukra is Yuti Mercury. So you can see that in his mind, he was absolutely delighted with things to do with, uh, with uh, perfumes. It delighted him. And, the, and because Chandra is exalted, the more high level it is, the more high class it is, the more royal it was, the more joy he got out of it. That was his aim out here. We are also going to look at the Dashamsha chart. We are actually going to uh, uh, look at the uh, four horoscopes out here, Rashi Navamsha, uh, Kalamsha, as well as Dashamsha, because all these people are professionals. And you can see again in the Dashamsha chart, uh, we have Taurus rising and we have Chandra and Shukra in the Lagna over here with Bakuri in the times. It's absolutely no brainer. This is what he really, really did. Now, when we have a graha in Dikpala, we also know that that graha tends to pull us in its direction. The mind pulled him in the direction of the moon. The moon is such a powerful graha in the Shorashamsha chart and it is exalted and Dikpala. Absolutely fantastic. What a mind he had. His mind dwelt in this. And uh, very uh, strangely, uh, right after the launching of this perfume, within six years he passed away. But take a look at his the Shamsha chart where Shukra and Chandra are Yuti, exalted Shukra again, and uh, sorry, uh, exalted Chandra again, and Shukra is in Swashetra in Taurus Lagna, as well as Taurus Lagna in Rashi. And you can see Amatya Karaka is the uh, uh, the the, uh, is the Amat, uh, Buddha is the Amatya Karaka Graha over here. Now what we are going to do, we are actually going to look at the horoscope. These are all uh, Loi Rodan double A horoscopes that I have taken. And we are now going to do with not as such much corrections in them. As That's why I said I've not done much Navamsha corrections. So this one a little bit on Javatu's horoscope we have done. We are now going to look at the perfume here. <coughs> who has actually created this perfume for Shabbatu. His name is Ari Almeras. He's a master perfumer. So all these, let me give you a little brief uh, note on this. All these people who create these perfumes, these people are called master perfumers. Uh, they are all trained. Uh, in France, there is a place called Grass, uh, and they are all trained over there. They work with different masters, then they're employed by the different perfume houses and they're employed now by also the fashion houses. Now what has happened is you would have heard of names like Armani and Dior and Givenchy, right? And Yves Saint Laurent. So though they are designers, they basically, they design clothes, they design accessories. They also do makeup, they do handbags, they do shoes and they all have fragrances. But fragrance is a part and package of an entire Shukra package, right? It's a part and package of yourself, how you're projecting yourself as a very, very uh, uh, sort of a luxury consumer person. But very few of them are original perfume houses, okay? So, so we are now going to look at the horoscopes of all these people who are master perfumers. So here is this person, Ari Olmeras. And Ari Olmeras was a master perfumer. He was trained in grass. He's worked in several top perfume houses like La Perfume de Rosa, La Perfume de Orsay, and other famous perfume houses in grass in France. And then he was employed by Jean Patou, where he created the Joy Perfume. We just did the uh, uh, sort of the horoscope of uh, Jean Patou in the previous chart. Here you can see his Atma Karaka is Rahu and Amatta Karaka again is Mercury. We can see Amatta Karaka here is in Taurus in Arura Lagna. So it is Dikbala from Arura Lagna. All right. It is in Taurus in the fifth house. And it, <clears throat> Venus is again here in a Prithvi Rashi is in Mercury sign. And you can see that there is also a Parivartana between Mercury and Venus by which Mercury and Venus will come into then Swashetra. All right. Now, if I come straight to the Kalamsha chart, you can see that Chandra is in Lagna, 
and Shukra is in 10,000. I keep telling you all that in the Kalamsha, we have to really look at not only Chandra, but we really, really need to look at the Kendras. Are these Grahas in the Kendras? Because it is all about the mind. Then definitely here we can see that Moon and Venus are there, which means those are the Grahas which are going to really, really going to give them pleasure. And if you note, Mercury is Ucha. Okay? If you come to the Shamsha, see, for all these people, we are looking at the Shamsha chart, and I'm sorry that I'm hurrying it a bit because I wanted to actually give you an overview of everything. So, in the Shamsha chart, because these people are professional perfumers, you can see Mercury is Ucha in Virgo Lagna. Amatta Karaka Mercury, Ucha in Virgo Lagna. Tenth Lord in Lagna, Ucha. What Siddhi? What, what a capable person he was. Amazingly capable person. All right. And uh, uh, so, uh, so it's, uh, Venus and Moon are also Yuti, you can see in Karkarashi. So, Chandra is Swashetra and Shukra is conjoined Chandra in Karkarashi, which is also a very, very fantastic uh, a combination. I want you to very, very note. A carefully notice and I saw this uniformly in the horoscopes of all the perfume makers this combination with especially moon Venus and with mercury thrown in because if you don't have that very high level of uh, perfume because you know here the Shamsha we always say that a Digbala Graha is very important so we can say that he did the right thing by going in the direction of the Digbala Graha which is Ucha Matta Karaka 10th Lord and Matta Karaka Ucha in the Lagna. So he followed, he went into the direction of the Digbalagraha. And my God, what a master perfumer. He was really a master. Others really follow him in to do that thing. You can uh, uh, see that uh, Chandra and Shukra are also Kendra out here. Okay, so I'm going to go a little bit in a hurry because I want to share the horoscopes with you. Now, this is the horoscope of another master perfumer. His name is Edmund Rudnitska. And Edmund Rudnitska was, again, a very, very legendary man. And he has created perfumes for very famous houses like Christian Dior, for Elizabeth Arden, for Hermes, and for Rocha. And for Christian Dior, he worked for 12 years. He was very iconic perfumer for Christian Dior's. And he actually invented the Eau Sauvage, that is a, for the men's line, it is something for an aftershave. This is the classic bottle which is out here, and I've actually put them inside the horoscopes. So they have new bottles nowadays, but he was the inventor of the Eau Sauvage, and another inventor of another perfume called the Diorissimo. And this Diorissimo is also a jasmine-based perfume. It's very interesting, all the famous perfumes are jasmine-based. The Joy was jasmine based, Diorosimo is jasmine based, Chanel number no. 5 is jasmine based. Okay. Uh, he later on uh, joined many companies. Eventually, he went to Graz and he set up his own garden. You can see the picture of him in his own garden. And he set up his own lab, a huge lab for making perfumes out here. All right. Atma Karaka Mercury, Amakta Karaka Shukra. Can we get any better? Tula Lagna. Okay, Shukra's Lagna with Chandra in Lagna and Venus in seven from Chandra. What a fantastic combination out here. Mercury is here in the sixth house, debilitated but getting Nijabhanga. In Navamsha also, you will see that Shukra is in Digbala. All right, Shukra is in Digbala and it is in a Prithvi Rashi. Now come to Shodashamsha. In Shodashamsha, it is Mercury rising, but here Moon is exalted. As I said, I've not done correction in this horoscope, but perhaps if I do correction, maybe Taurus would come into the Yog Lagna out here. But Moon nevertheless is exalted. We cannot deny that fact. There is a Parivartana between Shani and Chandra out here, sorry, Shani and Shukra out here, by which Shukra is coming to the trines in its own sign. All right, and Chandra nevertheless is exalted. The 12th house, incidentally, is a very, very important house because we see the notes from the 4th house and the 12th house, the actual act of smelling. So if I see one of these Shukra or Chandra Grahas in the 12th house, I'm not very actually surprised. And this is an existential level. And I can see that even in one of the earlier uh, horoscopes, we also saw Mercury and Venus in the 12th house in the 
in the G16 chart of Japatu. Again, in the uh, Dashamsha chart, you can see Mercury, Dikpala in Swashetra and Mithuna. Fantastic Shukra, Swashetra in fifth house. I'm going very fast. I hope you're following. I hope you're seeing these are people all right at the top and they are master perfumers, meaning they're perfume makers. So you don't get to hear about them. You only use these perfumes, those who do. And, uh, you know, and the brands which are selling them. But uh, so Edmund Rudnitska is a very, very legendary and famous man. So I think I've got another 10 minutes. So let me quickly hurry into and cover uh, some more charts. Now, when I said that in the West, what has happened in the fashion industry, in the uh, luxury industry, you have these houses, like for example, Christian Dior or Hermé or Roja, you're seeing these names. So you would have somebody who are like Japato, uh, similarly with the company Chanel, Coco Chanel, uh, also had the same thing. They start with a sense of style. They are designers of clothes. So, so they start their boutique and they do uh, uh, fantastic designing of clothes out there. Uh, you are aware of fashion shows that take place. These are the people who actually set trends out there. What kind of lines, colors, textures, materials which are going to be used. And all other companies just follow them suit. So they design handbags and belts and scarves, accessories hats, shoes, everything. And they do skincare, they do makeup, the colors of lipstick you're going to be using, and also a small deal of fragrances. But they are not perfumers. So they hired the perfumers. So you can see Christian Dior and Hermes, all these people hired Edmund Rudnitska. But of course, they become very legendary. And in the perfume industry, they would be known. Edmund Rudnitska would be known as a master perfumer. So these people are hired to create the perfumes from them. Okay, but there is one such house, one amongst all these well-known contemporary houses in the West, in Europe, one house which was started by a perfumer and over generations was handed down from son to grandson to grandson who were all perfumers. And that was the house of Gurler. And I have to admit to you that even I was not aware of this till very recently. So La Maison Gourlet, that is the house of Gourlet, it was established in 1828 by Pierre-Francois Pascal Gourlet. You can see this. He himself started the boutique, but he was a perfumer. And he was so fantastic in his work. And of course, we do not have his horoscope. He created a perfume for Emperor Napoleon III. And he was designated His Majesty's official perfumer. He created perfumes for Napoleon III's wife. He created perfume for Queen Victoria of England. He created perfumes for Queen Isabella II. So a little bit of what we talked about for royalty that is coming back over here. All right. His son, the legacy was carried by his son. His son was called Aimee Gulla, two sons, Aimee Gulla and Gabrielle Gulla. They run the company. But Gabrielle was the business partner, and Amy was the perfumer. All right. But Amy did not marry as he was a homosexual. So Gabrielle Gurler's son, Jacques Gurler, uh, became actually the master perfumer again and the head of the business. And after that, Jacques Gurler's grandson, Jean Paul Gurler, again perfumer. But Jean Paul Gurler had a lot of character flaws and he made some politically incorrect. Uh, uh, comments, etc. So finally, he sold his company to uh, Louis Vuitton company, you know, who are the large conglomerate owning a lot of these houses. And you can see now, so it's not it's not a family run business anymore. It's a corporate. They also do all kinds of things. And now they hire master perfumers like this guy out here. But amongst all these four people, the one who is most famous and the most prolific and the most brilliant was Jacques Gourlet. So we are going to take a look at the horoscope of Jacques Gourlet. Now, Jacques Gourlet was supposed to be 20th century's most influential, one of the most influential perfume makers, as well as the one of the most prolific. It is said he was a very low-key man, and it is said that he perhaps composed at least 400 perfumes. Here are some of the names. Those of you who buy perfumes off the shelves, huh? Uh, the Blue Hour, La Your Blue, Mitsuko, 
then the Shah Elise and the Shalimar, then you have Sansara, but Sansara was not created by him. So, Atma Karaka Rahu, Amatta Karaka son. So, Atma Karaka Rahu, because Rahu is also a bhogi, and you can see in one of the earlier horoscopes also, we had somebody who had Atma Karaka Rahu. But Moon is in Lagna and Shukra is in Dikbala. Now, this man was not just a perfumer, but he was a business owner. He was fantastically wealthy. He was very famous, very renowned in his circle. He was awarded the uh, Chevalier de Légion d'Honneur, you know, one of the highest awards of France. So you can see that this combination uh, is there. Okay. Now in uh, Navamsha, we do have Mercury over here, but you can see that Shukra is in a Prithvi Rashi out here. Okay. Shukra is in a Prithvi Rashi and Shukra is in trines to Swamsha. This is the Karakamsha. So Karakamsha is a very important Swamsha point. So you can see that Shukra and Mercury, Buddha, both are trines to the Karakamsha. Okay. And uh, Shukra is in Prithvi Rashi out here. So note this. We come to Kalamsha now here, Shodashamsha. In Shodashamsha, uh, here we do have Mercury again exalted in the trines. Again, as I said, this I have not tampered with the times out here, uh, corrections or any such thing, but Shukra is exalted in the trines. Okay, and then we come to Dashamsha, and his Dashamsha again is absolutely fantastic. All right, you have Parampara Yoga, Shasha Mahapurusha Yoga. All right, you have Simhasana Yoga. 10th Lord Surya, which is the Amatta Karaka, conjoined moon in the second house. All right. Simhasana Yoga, you have second Lord Jupiter in Lagna, in Digbala, which is forming Sri Mantra Yoga. So all these things really, really actually uh, apply to him. Trines to Rahu, Trajas, trines to the Atma Karaka, you have Mercury and Shukra. Shukra again in Prithvi Rashi. All right, Shukras and Pitvi Rashi, as well as in Navamsha, as well as here. Now, remember, his was a business. You can see that there is a fantastic uh, Parivartana over here between Venus and Rahu. Okay, a fantastic Parivartana. Rahu being Atma Karaka, please note, very, very powerful. This Parivartana was also present in a, another horoscope. Uh, Okay, now the very interesting thing is that all many of us or many of the people who buy perfumes from the West, all right, who are uh, purchasing perfumes from the uh, from these uh, famous uh, branded companies, uh, you know about all these names. But I started by saying that Gurle was an originally perfume house, and that for four generations the owners. Uh, Mr. Gurlai, whoever the Mr. Gurlai was, was the owner and the master perfumer. All right. So that's why the house of Gurlai stands out and that's why I highlighted on it. If you look further, you will see that they have gone now into the concept of oath perfumery. The website will show you a section on oath perfumery. And they have such perfumes where I think normally it is not available or people, unless they are into luxury fragrances, would not even know that they actually exist. One of them, this one, the uh, blue, which they've made into an oath perfume. It is an artist has created this new uh, bottle. And uh, this uh, perfume is now not available for sale. Only a collector can buy it. And the collectors have to privately get in touch with Gurlai Company. And then they will, I suppose, uh, you know, uh, charge some exorbitant price and you can get it. So this, what he said, what Jacques Gurlai said, because when he created the blue, he said a fragrance of suspended time. You see, here you see how they are perceiving the master perfumers. He says it captures that fleeting moment when the night has not yet found its stars. The sun has set, but night has not yet fallen. Is the suspended hour, the hour when one finally finds oneself in renewed harmony with the world and the light. That was his uh, uh, inspiration in creating that perfume. But as I said, if you look beyond this, which is not advertised, is the oath perfumery. 
So there is a whole old perfumery section to go there, which many people or the public are not aware of because this is not available in any, uh, you know, shop, maybe unless their shop. See the number of luxury fragrances they have. All right, I've just given a highlight of sample for you. And it is not just oud, which are catering to the uh, Middle East audience. They have created this. There are people who are using this. Very secretive. All right. Now, this is one last chart I will share with you. Uh, I hope at the time I will run very, very uh, uh, quickly with it. This is also the horoscope of another master perfumer. His name is Jean-Claude Elena. And he has been the chief perfumer or the master perfumer for the famous uh, company Hermes, La Maison Hermes, and he worked with them. He's created single-handedly 13 of their perfumes and jointly with other perfumers, he's created 21 of their perfumes. After that, he has gone on to work for many other perfume houses. You would not even know these names, I suppose, but Bulgari you would probably have heard of. That's quite a common name. And Frederick Mahl. Frederick Mahl is somebody who is very much invested in perfumes, but I'm not able to get his birth data. Frederick Mahl hires all these master perfumers, like six, seven, eight of them, and these fantastic perfumes are created. So he's, uh, uh, Jean-Claude Elena is a very high, high level. He said his ideal was uh, Edmund Rudinska. Now, very quickly, Atmakarika Mercury, Amantakarika San. Rashi chart, we see Venus and Dikbala and Venus and Mercury together out here. All right. Chandra in the 12th house. Okay. Chandra in the 12th house and Tula. And you can see that the 12th Lord has come to the 4th house. Quickly come to Navamsha. Mercury is here uh, in, uh, uh, in the uh, Lagna Kona. All right. Mercury is here in the Lagna Kona. Mercury is the Atmakarika. So it is in Swamsha itself. Okay. Uh, and then very quickly, I will want to focus on the D16 chart. D16 chart, again, you can see Mars, uh, Venus and Mercury in Kendra. Venus again in Digbala. You can see Venus is in Digbala in Rashi and Digbala in Parashara. He's gone in that path. The dispositor of Shukra is exalted in the D16 Lagna. So his mind is very, very much out here. All right, very, very much out here. And if we come to the Shamsha, okay, if we come here to the Shamsha, we can see that Mercury again in Lagna, Atmakarika Mercury in Lagna, Venus and Sun is there in the 10th house. Okay, there are many other. You notice that there's a very powerful Parivartana between Venus and Chandra. Chandra is the 10th Lord of the Shamsha, which is exalted in the uh, 8th house. And there is a Parivartana between Shukra and Chandra out here. The 10th Lord and Amartakaraka, 10th Lord of Rashi and Amartakaraka Surya is also out here conjoined with Chandra. So very, very hurriedly, I actually uh, uh, showed all this to you. So you can see what a very powerful uh, combination this is. I also had Coco Chanel's horoscope, but Coco Chanel was really neither a creator nor a producer, nor somebody like Jean Patu, uh, who was into fragrances. Uh, it, that was really much more uh, a commercial a marketing a success. So I did not share Coco Chanel's horoscope with you uh, and the number five story. I could not get the birth data of the creator of the number five, Ernest uh, Yo, could not get his chart. And uh, 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 also, I want to end with this one thing, our Ru Gula. So this is sold in a little back alley of Old Delhi. The Ru Gula, as discovered by Asmat Begum, the mother of Nur Jahan, right? Look at this shady, absolutely dismal packaging, dismal box, all right? Available 9 grams for 36,000, which is almost $500, and 5 grams for 18,000 rupees. This is frightfully expensive. They are the only things sold by Gulab Singh Jodiwal. They are the only ones who are actually uh, selling this. So uh, this was very introductory and I really promised to uh, work much more uh, or rather I've already worked but present much more in detail on the theory, much more charts and in more detail on the horoscopes 
and I would present it in a series, but thanks to Raman and Rajeshwari Foundation, thanks to Niranjan Babuji and Raman Suprajarama, uh, I uh, dare to think and set forth in this direction. So I've already overshot my time by five minutes, and I know I've really rushed it, but uh, I hereby end my presentation. So. So it's over to you, Srishti. Thank you, Sarbani ji, for a really interesting and insightful session. Uh, we now move on to the Q&A session. The questions will come up on the screen. I'd request you kindly ma'am to read it out aloud for the benefit of everyone and then answer them one by one. Sure, sure. So, uh, All right, this is a question from Viraj and he says that if Chandra is in Tula and Shukra is in Visharashi with Buddha, then can we consider the Parivartana of Shukra with Chandra for the fragrance related thing? So Chandra in Tula and Shukra in a Visharashi, of course, definitely it's a Parivartana because Chandra is the co-lord of uh, uh, Visharashi. So definitely, and it depends, of course, as I told you, you just cannot uh, uh, see only uh, one horoscope. You uh, need to see uh, all of them. You need to see the uh, Navamsha, the uh, D16, because these are luxury products. So D16 becomes very important. And if it is your profession, then the Shamsha chart also has to be seen. All right. Yes, definitely. Okay, uh, there's a question from Vijay Bhaskar that if one wants to strengthen a planet, can one apply perfume related to the planet? For example, rose or for sun or all perfumes, irrespective will only strengthen Venus or Mercury, Ganga Tattva only. Oh no, to strengthen a planet to use a perfume? No, I don't think that's a good idea. But if you want to uh, strengthen Shukra in your chart, definitely Venus uh, uh, perfume is definitely a way both venus and mercury all right mercury because it is gandha tattva and shukra because it is part of the uh, entire luxury package it will definitely strengthen venus and uh, when it strengthens venus then automatically it impacts chandra as well a uh, question from vipin acharya can mercury moon and venus and trikona to each other can form the yoga if yes, will it be a strong yoga? Again, yes, it can form the yoga. All right, definitely can form the yoga. Um, and uh, I mean, the the points that I raised was actually swamsha. Swamsha means that we are not just looking at uh, trikona. Of, I mean, I did look at the uh, Karakamsha trikona in a couple of the horoscopes. We saw that Mercury and Venus was in trines to Karakamsha, that is trines to swamsha, that gives you the abilities. I did not have, as I said, time to go into it. It was a very, very introductory talk, but yes, it definitely is a strong yoga. But trines to where? Trikona, not just anywhere, but trikona from either Lagna or Swamsha. Okay, another question from Vijay Bhaskar. Uttering correct number of syllable in mantra is beneficial, whereas incorrect syllable mantra may cause harm. Which syllable mantra can one uh, should consciously avoid even by mistake? Vijay, I don't think that this is at all related to the topic, so I will not answer this. Uh, thank you once again, Sarbani ji, for the excellent masterclass. With this, we come to the end of the Q&A uh, session. Before we end today's session, I would like to take this opportunity to inform the audience that the next masterclass session is on Sunday, that is 23rd October 2022. The class will be by Pandit Sanjay Rajji, and he will be teaching us about Marana Karaka's Thana. See you again there. 
Also, if you'd like to stay informed about the master classes and similar sessions by the foundation, we encourage you to visit our website www.rrf.in or join our Telegram channel.